Hey, so yesterday I didn't exactly, yesterday? Yeah, yesterday I didn't exactly update you properly about my medicine. Um, and uh, so uh, I just wanted to clarify some things. So this medication here, and uh, is usually used for diabetic people and uh, it is occasionally used for people at risk and also for people who are not at risk of our risk of diabetics but for its weight loss properties uh, so um, what this does is um, basically um for instance in my case it's going to control the the insulin and make uh, its usage more effective and prevent uh me from getting insulin resistance um which would insulin resistant is diabetes now, uh, I always had hypoglycemia since very, very young. I didn't know what it, what caused it, but apparently I may have had this uh, overage of insulin from a very young age, and this is a risk factor for type 2 diabetes, and it is hereditary, and uh, yes, I do have on both sides of the family diabetic people. I think one of my grandparents was type 1 diabetic and the other one type 2, but still, I, I, I don't think that type 1 is hereditary, but type 2 is. And I have other risk factors like high cholesterol. Well, not high cholesterol, but um, it's not, it's like it's on the normal range, but it's on the upper side of the normal range. So that's it. Still at a, a healthy level of cholesterol, but considering my family history, something to look for. Now, this is uh, metamorphin, and um, I already took it once, but it would me, made me make me faint, crash, and they told me to get the brand name. Now, what this does is um, if you have insulin resistance, it will improve uh, uh, your absorption and proper uh, body usage of insulin and reduce the production of insulin. And in people like me that don't have insulin resistance but have uh, overage of insulin, it not only prevents going getting insulin resistance, it also reduces the weight gain and um, oh it also reduces hunger for whatever reason it caused me to have hunger the other time i think it was the fact that it was not a brand name but uh, still um okay publicity so uh it was an abnormal reaction usually this is supposed to reduce uh hunger in my case maybe because i'm always uh i'm not uh, hungry and i take um cinnamon and ginger tea to try and increase and make me eat more meals i have uh, an alarm clock set up to uh make sure that i don't forget to eat and sometimes i just uh you know, I just uh, snooze it because I'm not hungry. And uh, But I try to make now at least two meals a day or three meals. But usually by the second meal, I'm not no longer hungry. And I'll skip, skip the, the other two meals. So, yeah. So, I don't know if this is going to make me eat more. But uh, I'll, I'm going to keep on the ginger tea and uh, cinnamon because it increases the amount of food that I'm capable of eating. And the reason it is important is because it doesn't matter that you under eat or not. 
uh, the overage of insulin will affect your metabolic rate. So um, this is why some people can't lose weight even on a diet. Um, so what the excess insulin will make is that regardless of how many calories you ingest, your body, and this, this is something that I didn't know the reason, I only knew that it happened to me, and I didn't think it was something hormonal, I actually thought that it was caused by the fact that I underate. Um, I don't know if you remember some videos where I explained, for instance, that, uh, um, well, at least uh, that's, uh, I thought that my metabolism had slowed down and my body held on to whatever I, I ate because of my under eating. So my body tries to hold on to whatever food I ingest and uh, goes into starvation mode and uh, kind of accumulates whatever calories I ingest shuts down needless functions like uh, sometimes menstruation, reproductive functions. Uh, I get a fuzzy head, you know, I, you know, I can't concentrate or something like that because the body is holding on to every single calorie. Uh, sometimes that's how I know that I need to eat because I start about, you know, getting dizzy and about to faint because I, I don't, I don't know why. I don't get the, 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 the only time I feel hunger is right after the shower. For whatever reason, taking a shower makes me hungry. And that's the only time I truly feel hungry. When I was at the gym, I'd go to the gym and I wouldn't feel hungry either. Unless, uh, you know, after the gym, you go to the sauna or to the pool and you take a shower only after the shower even after hours and hours of exercise the only thing that prompted and stimulated my appetite was the shower i don't know what it is about going to a shower or taking a bath that makes you hungry but it's the only thing that makes me hungry so yeah um that's a great part of it so i assume that uh, my body held on to the calories because uh, of my under eating. So I was, that, that's why I try to explain that some people, when they under eat, they get an erratic and uh, their body starts to consume their, its muscle mass and starts to consume itself and they get very, very, very skeletal and uh, thin. But in some other cases, it goes big and uh, obese. And uh, even though the person under eats, the person gets bigger and bigger and bigger. In my case, I actually keep the weight, uh, you know, within a certain range. But some people go bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think I may have PCOS. Uh, because uh, my doctor actually said that the fact that uh, I only have my period every other month now, I may have PCOS, so this may also be connected to the insulin uh, overage and uh, also to this situation. Um, so actually, I do need to increase my calories. Because uh, however much I eat, my body is trying to hold on to its calories. And it's not because I under eat, it's because of the excess insulin. Now I have the answer for why this happens to me and it doesn't happen to other people. It's because the insulin is going to process the sugars. And the sugars, by sugars, I mean glucose. I don't mean uh, that you're eating sweets or chocolate. Don't be afraid of the word sugars because sugars is basically carbohydrates, which is the minimum minimal com um, unit uh, of every food. So basically, if you eat eat um, 
you know, uh, legumes, it's mostly carbs. Of course, you have protein in them and you eat fruit, mostly carbs. If you eat salad, mostly carbs. Uh, that's what, uh, you know, carbohydrates are. And glucose happens to be one of them. And it is present in uh, everything, even uh, in salty and sour fruits. Because there is the common misconception that uh, diabetes and uh, insulin is only affected by... Actually, it is also affected by fat. Um, is only affected by how many sweets you eat, how much candy you eat. It can also be affected by non-sweet foods. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. And when you have this condition, I don't think it's a condition, when, when you have this hormonal imbalance, whatever you eat in whatever quantities will be stored up as fat because the, the insulin's response is so fat that uh, basically you digest the sugar. Uh, that's also one of the reasons you should avoid sweets. Thank God I'm not much of a sweets person unless chocolate once a month and no woman can uh, blame me for that. Not really a, much of a chocolate person, but that time of the month, sometimes I eat chocolate. So, but I'm not very much of a sweets person, so uh, refined sugars, uh, flour, stuff like that, you should avoid. Because what happens is you get uh, sugar peaks because it's... Uh, something that causes you to have those sugar peaks. And what happens is to counter that uh, sugary food or, uh, you know, you should also avoid, uh, you know, certain beverages and alcohol, even though alcohol doesn't have glucose, because it is sweet, it triggers an insulin uh, response in your body, which is even worse because then you won't have glucose in your body and uh, you get that insulin spike and you have nothing to counter it and it co causes you a uh, uh, hypoglycemic crisis. So it's actually good that I don't drink alcohol either or very rarely drink alcohol because alcohol triggers uh, a response um, but because alcohol is not digested by, uh, it is not processed by insulin, it will, you know, it's, it's, a, it's complicated. Um, so that's uh, the major part of this situation here. So uh, it doesn't matter how much calories you cut, your body... Um, is going to hold on to whatever you eat. And uh, to, to start storing uh, those calories as fat, your body will reduce its daily expenditure to basically store whatever you eat as food uh, reserves. So it's not just the, the, the starvation mode. I think the starvation mode can trigger that too. But uh, now I have a medical explanation. That's what the doctor said. And so basically I need to be careful to eat enough cal calories. This medication alone is going to help counter the, eff the effect of insulin and control it and uh, that's um, that's that because um, what happens when you have a strong uh, insulin response is uh, and this is really hard to explain because I don't have charts or anything to explain and this part I learned by myself but uh, still 
when you get that insulin spike, that insulin, like I told you about my test results, uh, I produce so much insulin that it absorbs the sugar or, well, that, in that case, it was pure glucose. And I hope I never have to drink that foul beverage again. It's so sweet, but so sweet. I almost threw up multiple times because it caused me nausea, complete nausea. But they promised me that I won't have to go through it again anytime soon. Thank God. So that's that. Uh, but uh, what happens is, since your body digests glucose at a faster rate than you consume it, your body is going to store it because it doesn't need it. And so what it does is, whatever your level of activity is, and that explains why I had to you know, do six hours of gym a day to be able to to lose weight at the same rate other people would do because what I, what my insulin does basically is that um, since it uh, processes the sugars, and by sugars I mean carbohydrates of any kind, uh, almost as soon as it gets into your uh, body, you don't need to, uh, all those calories at once, so they will be stored in your body for later. Uh, in some people, that actually causes them to feel more famished, and that's why you have people that get obese and obese and obese, but because I have uh, some issue with eating and I under eat. I am obese, but I don't get to the super obese level, thank God. But still, this, uh, hang on, I'm just going to pause for a minute to. But again, because, and I'm sorry for the pause, I had to. Uh, you know, I was, I had my food uh, still a little bit. Uh, so because uh, your body is uh, uh, digesting things at a rate that is uh, faster, so <laughs> actually, it's not a fast metabolism, but the, the carbohydrate digestion is faster then uh, the, your body needs carbs, it will store them as uh, fat. And uh, that's why you accumulate fat in your body and you have a hard time to lose weight. Um, and uh, in some people, hang on, in some people this causes them to overeat and um, Mostly, they will crave sweet things and carby stuff because that's what their body craves because they have that insulin spike and uh, that insulin uh, makes them eat and the more they eat, the more insulin they produce and then they start developing insulin resistance and so then the body stops responding to insulin and the more insulin they they produce and that can actually start attacking your organs. Thank God, and maybe because of my under eating, I never got to insulin resistance. Uh, but again, I'm at high risk of insulin resistance. <sighs> it's really hard to explain it. So, henceforth, I'll be henceforth. I will be taking this medication that will help me lose and manage my weight because it controls the, eff the effectivity of the insulin and makes it more normal. Uh, so it reduces the fat storage. And uh, if I keep the diet that I have, have now or increase uh, my calories a little, and uh, my level of activity, 
this alone should be enough to make me drop weight and he said that I need to be careful because um, instead of the planned 80 kilos by October I could be weighing 70 by August because uh, this is going to be making a massive difference and only also I have read that this medication also reduces bloating and um, fluid retention so a lot of inflammation will be reduced as well so this has it actually acts on multiple fronts and that's the reason why it's used on people that don't have diabetes uh, or that uh, you know uh, um, or that have uh, like in my case uh, I don't have diabetes but I, I'm at risk of diabetes and it's not pre-diabetes because and I asked him that because uh, by pre-diabetes I'd have some insulin resistance and that's not the case um, so um, that's why I feel dizziness and I feel so bad uh, when uh, throughout the day because I under eat and I have this insulin issue and they didn't uh, have the results for my cortisol levels but I bet they're very high too so this uh, should be another problem <laughs> because I already tested for high cortisol once uh, and I'm sure I'm going to be testing again for high cortisol uh, but that's it so um, this medication is used also in non-diabetic obese people um, because of its properties that help uh, you know more effectively managing uh, the carbs and uh, then you have my case that is at risk uh, from family problems and it also avoids uh, hypoglycemic attacks which is uh, basically I never had a near-death uh, hypoglycemic attack but I've I've been at risk for it um, and uh, so, and it also, and which is probably the most important thing, avoid uh, my body to develop insulin resistance, which would make uh, weight gain even worse. And um, so, yeah, that's it. And I'm sorry if I'm not very good at explaining things. Uh, I'll be off social media for a few days. I'm going. I uh, need a little pause, a little break. I've been a little down, and uh, I just wanted to explain this because I wanted to explain how, because this is not a miraculous uh, drug. This only works in specific cases. It's not a magical gimmick. Uh, if you don't have a healthy lifestyle this won't work for you you'll still be obese and overweight this only works for cases like mine which are so hard to diagnose because a lot of obese people lie to their doctors um, and uh, I've had so many blood tests done and they never do the right blood tests uh only when i told him that i'm hypoglycemic all the time that i cannot donate blood he he still doubted me but he decided to give me the benefit of the doubt and he asked for these tests to be done and i feel relieved because now at long last i know what is causing me this these difficulties and now as I exercise, I won't be discouraged because I know that with these drugs, this should really re redu um, reduce uh, the effects of insulin 
and should make exercise more effective. I need to remind everyone that this doesn't work as a magic drug. You have to put in the effort, you have to exercise. This only works if you are an active person who holds on to weight due to insulin. If you eat like crap, if you don't exercise, this won't work for you. This only works as a supplement to exercise to counteract the various effect of insulin. So that's it. Goodbye, good luck, and I'll keep you updated.